Well, I've been getting a ton of questions on how do you look at training videos and then how do you compare it against real violence? And so I'm going to take a clip that I got from a training video and then we're going to look at it with real violence. And listen, the whole focus is to make sure that you get the best information. So it's not to put down other instructors, it's not to do anything else, but it's absolutely important that you understand the difference between theory and reality. All right, but before we do that, if you are ready to start putting together your plan for your family to minimize the chance of violence coming into your life, criminal violence, go to timlarkin.com, give us your email, and we will send you a free guide that has 11 different modules that will help you create the plan to make sure that you minimize the chance of violence coming into your life. That's at timlarkin.com. Okay, guys, so listen, I've got a clip from a instructor, and he did it years ago. He may have changed his methodology since then, but again, the only reason I'm using it is not to put the particular instructor down, is to show something that is said, and then he shows, again, in a training context, some backup you know, data for himself. But then when you show it against reality, you realize, oh, what he just said didn't add up didn't actually happen so again this is with edged weapons and uh, you know there's a variety of different things i could i could put together but i chose this edged weapons one for us to look at so let's take a look at the training this is a video where he's talking about essentially two guys it's like a duel type situation when i mean a duel it's one-on-one -on -one and they're both showing their knives and they're gonna fight you know a knife fight quote unquote we could talk about the reality of this you know what does this really actually happen in the real world it's rare it's very rare if it happens. As I've told you, the adage for knives, people that use knives, is a knife is to be felt, not seen. So the idea of two guys jumping out, like you know, West Side Story or some of these other gang movies where people are doing knife fights, it's a very rare occurrence. But that said, what I want you to hear about is how he talks about the injury that he puts on the guy and what he believes will happen to the human body once it's received this type of an injury. Okay, and then we will go to real violence. All right, so let's hear what he has to say. The knife will come in and I'll take it here and then I'll feed it back. No, that doesn't work. Number one, when you cut on the form, it's not just, oh, there's a cut and there's a little line and I'm bleeding, but in a fight I've got pain tolerance. I'm not gonna get too graphic, but without getting overly graphic, the body goes into shock. You, within two seconds, you're bleeding, you're ready to pass out in about 15 seconds, your body's already pumped, you're moving around, it cuts here, it's open. Your body goes into instant shock. You have no timing. You have no footwork. You have about three. Okay, so what he said is he's talking about a cut to the forearm. And he's going to demonstrate this coming up next. Uh, he's talking about a, a deep cut to the guy's forearm. And he said, you know, as soon as that happens, this is an open wound and the body starts to shut down. Uh, then he's kind of all over the place with his timing. He says, oh, in three seconds, you know, the body's going to start to, to shut down. You're going to start going into shock. You got about 15 seconds before everything goes off. And then he goes back to two seconds and three seconds. So again, that's non-specific right there. But now he's going to show a demonstration. He's going to show exactly what he's talking about, how, you know, once he does this cut on another individual, it's over. And then he demonstrates how powerful the cut is on a piece, on a side of beef. So it's, it's a pretty impressive demo, but let's watch it. Seconds to do whatever it is you're going to do, if that. So the minutes you take the knife hand and cut it, that is the end of the fight. To illustrate that point of cutting the hand, defanging the snake, let's see what this knife does to the side of beef. And I have news for you. That side of beef is no different than your arm. Okay, so what he did was he showed the guy coming at him, and then he took his knife, and you saw him. He goes right down the forearm, and he's so confident that it's over. So what does he do? He, he actually holsters the knife. You know, he puts it right back in its, in its uh, folder sheath. And then he shows with his knife a demonstration on a hanging side of beef, and he does three quick you know, deep slash cuts, and he shows exactly what it does. He pulls the beef apart, and he says, hey, this is a lot like the human body. Look how quickly this happened. It would shut anybody down. Let's go ahead and look at a recent stabbing in L.A. I'm hoping to God that YouTube is going to let this one go. There's no real blood, but you can absolutely see what this guy is doing. And then I want you to see how quickly this individual gets shut down. Let's take a look. Starts out typical, you know, squaring off, two knuckleheads. Right. right now, it just looks like a normal, a normal, like, you know, BS fight. Boom, and that's it. That's a knife. 
he is stabbing. Watch how many times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's got at least ten stabs in on that. Look at this guy. This guy's running after him. What happened to the three-second shutdown? He's chasing him full speed. Now he's starting to slow down. Now he's starting to have the loss of blood, and he's going to collapse. Did the guy shut down? Yeah, he shut down. Why did he shut down? Well, he was running really fast after being stabbed multiple times. It is increasing the blood flow, and it's going to, you know, make, make him shut down. Why did I show it? That guy was stabbed not once. He was stabbed at least 10 times. Now, plunging it into the body versus slashing. Okay, we've, I've done other videos on that and talking about it. We talked about the Roman centurions. They literally thought it was so important to stab into the body that they had a saying over the barracks that said, basically, I'll take a four-inch uh, stab over a 12-inch slash because a lot of the, the barbarians that they went up against all were hackers and slashers, and the smaller Romans understood plunging the gladius deep into the body is what kills people. And again, it's the difference between arterial bleeding and getting into the highly vascular organs of the human body versus the venous bleeding of, you know, getting cut um, on the skin area. It's just the way the body's designed. It's a much slower bleed when you are doing venous bleeds. What you just saw was a guy that didn't shut down right away. As a matter of fact, he ran around after the guy full speed. Had he access to, say, a firearm, had he access to even another uh, type of a weapon, he probably could have got the guy a couple of times with a weapon during that time. But what I wanted to show was this instant shock. I can just put my tool away and this guy's just going to drop over. That's not the way the human body responds to trauma. My friend Tom Kyer from Psyoc Tactical talks, he talks in terms of when you're using an edged weapon, he's talking about the idea of even hitting, hitting a timer or a switch. A switch is something that will shut that part of the body off right away. A timer is something that will eventually shut the person down, but they have to bleed out a little bit on that. And again, it's all about targeting. Where did you put in the body? Now, this guy had very little targeting, but he plunged into the body enough to where he got the guy, you know, to start you know, bleeding very heavily towards the end there. The instructor, I'm sure he meant, meant well. I think what he was talking about was, you know, a cut deep into the forearm. Could it decrement function? Absolutely. If he was successful of cutting deeply into, you know, the top of the forearm, there's a good chance that he got the radial nerve. And if he got the radial nerve, well, that, you know, the use of the hand, the ability to hold on to something is, is really that function is decremented, but it doesn't shut the man down. This stabbing that we just saw, that was the intent to kill. This guy wanted to keep plunging into the body. He definitely wanted to kill that individual. And uh, he stabbed him multiple times. And there was no three-second shutdown. Oftentimes, you know, when we see training, there can be very convincing demos. But what you have to do is all training, including mine, okay? You need to check it against reality. You need to check it against real violence. So that's why it's so important to objectively watch real acts of violence and see what happens. Yes, I agree. We don't, we don't care whether the guy feels pain. Pain is irrelevant. What we want to do is did we decrement a function? You know, did we shut down a sensory system of the human body or did we break structure to where the guy can no longer continue? It's even more important when you are using tools. You want to make sure that where you put the tool gets a real result. And that's why it's worth, obviously, targeting the human body and understanding how the body responds to trauma. So you won't be surprised in situations like this where all of a sudden, hey, wait a minute, in training... This guy's supposed to just fall over, and this guy keeps coming. That's why you don't want to train like that. You want to train for the worst-case scenario. And we've talked about that multiple times on this channel. Now, again, not trying to put down any particular instructor. It just happened to be a good piece of uh, instructor video I could use that was relevant. I have many more videos that I can share that would show the same thing. People being stabbed multiple times and still being able to function. The last thing you want to do is train in a way that is not realistic to the way the body responds to trauma. That's just it. Okay. This is why we keep coming back to trauma, understanding human anatomy, and then understanding what the reaction to trauma is and, and having no surprises when you do it. And, and the other thing, it takes real work to shut somebody down. This is not something where you just touch the area and they just magically fall over. 
It just doesn't happen that way. So again, I'm just trying to reiterate, I will do more on edged weapons and I will do more on training with tools and you know what's important, how to actually deploy the tools and get real results uh, using the tools. But this one was just to show that you know, it, it, literally this instructor said one, one cut to the forearm and the guy will capitulate and give up. And that's it. The body will shut down. And we just saw one example of which I could have shown 15 more of people being stabbed multiple times and not being shut down in anywhere near to three to 15 seconds. They had a lot left in them. All right. So listen, now, if you're ready to start putting together your plan in reality, and how to deal with criminal violence, and you want to know exactly how the body responds to trauma, exactly what you can and can't count on, exactly what you have to and don't have to respond to, go to timlarkin.com, give us your email, and we will send you out a guide that has 11 different modules that will help you put together a plan that will minimize the chance of violence coming into your life and your families. So until next time, stay safe.